Hey everyone, we've got a quick video today on crime for the Southern Oregon coast. As always on this channel, we're going to dig into the data, look at some stats, look at some real numbers, uh, as opposed to maybe some of the things that you might find online just doing a quick Google search. And I want to show you how just a quick search online might not give you the most accurate representation of what to expect if you're not familiar with these areas. And I really want you to understand what crime is like on the Southern Oregon coast. All that starts now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Living on the Oregon Coast, Seth Marchant, licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I'll be your host today, and uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about crime. We're going to look uh, mostly Coos Bay to North Bend, uh, down south to Brookings. Um, I'll include Reedsport uh, as well, which is just a small area just north of the North Bend, Coos Bay area. Uh, one thing that I always do when I make these videos is I'll do a quick search myself online to see what everybody else is seeing. And uh, a lot of people have mentioned maps like this uh, to me in the past. And I really want to point these out because, like I mentioned in this video, I'm going to go over actual data, uh, which is reported uh, uh, by local police departments and tracked by the FBI. I know when you do a search for something such as crime in a particular area, in this case, Coos Bay, oftentimes websites like these, like crimegrade.org, uh, come up or uh, city data uh, comes up. Niche.com tends to come up a lot. But uh, these heat maps, uh, I've had a lot of people comment about these in the past. And uh, as you can see here, we're looking at the Coos Bay North Bend area and the color code, the lighter colors are going to represent uh, a better grade all the way up to green being A plus and the darker shades of like orange and red are going to be uh, an F rating, uh, a lower grade. So as you can see, a lot of red and a lot of orange in the North Bend Coos Bay area. So if you're just doing a quick Google search, probably going to think that a lot of this area is really, really bad. Again, this website is giving it an F. Uh, in fact, uh, Los Angeles uh, is rated slightly above uh, Coos Bay North Bend. But if you're coming from Los Angeles, if you've lived in Los Angeles, if you're familiar with that area, is Coos Bay North Bend going to feel like it has more crime or is actually worse than a place like L.A.? Uh, probably not. So let's dig into the numbers and uh, before we get to the numbers here, here's another uh, that I mentioned city data. So if you're looking at their heat map, which is uh, similarly coded uh, from green being good uh, to red being bad, you're going to see a lot of in between. You're going to see orange and, and yellow. Um, so just doing a quick Google search between these two areas is already going to be very confusing for most people. Because if you get this website, city data, it's not going to look too bad if you get crimegrade.org, it's going to look terrible. And another thing I noticed uh, that came up uh, in my search here before we look at the data for Coos Bay is Coos Bay did make uh, a list from a, a, a website, or maybe it's a magazine, uh, southwestjournal.com, of the 10 most dangerous cities in Oregon for 2023. You might take a website to a, or an article like this uh, with a grain of salt as you can see, if you're watching, if you're not just listening, if you're watching this, uh, the graphic associated with this headline says, where to take your pooch in Beantown. And then it says, best dog parks of Boston. So again, not, probably not taking this article too serious. Bonus points if you recognize this little town. It is a town along the Oregon coast, uh, although it is not on the list. Again, just making the article that much more funny. But nevertheless, this showed up... Uh, uh, fairly high. I think on the first page of a Google search when you're searching property crime or, or violent crime or just crime in general for Coos Bay. So they had Coos Bay at number seven. And uh, they said that uh, Coos Bay, despite its uh, small population and picturesque location, has been facing a rise in both violent and property crime. The city's taken measures to enhance law enforcement, visibility, and engage with community-based crime prevention strategies. However, Coos Bay's problems with substance abuse and the resultant petty crimes I don't see that word very often, resultant. You usually see like resulting. I don't even know if I've ever seen that word before. Uh, often committed to support drug habits remain key challenges. Now, anecdotally, I know a lot of people in Coos Bay, uh, the drug problem is a real thing, specifically methamphetamines. People are getting addicted to meth and uh, what uh, tends to result in more uh, property crime. City, uh, city t uh, Statistics uh, has Coos Bay rated as an F. And uh, just to show you a graph, too, because uh, crime is very subjective. It's very relative. 
If crime is going up, it feels like it's high, regardless of where it was before. If it's going down, it doesn't feel as high, of course. So just looking at this graph compared to the state of Oregon, uh, which is the orange sort of dotted line, and uh, the United States, which is the green dotted line, you can see that Coos Bay, since uh, about 09 or so, uh, has bounced above Oregon and above the entire country, but has been up and down, and this just goes uh, to 2018. But as you can see, uh, it has been slightly above average at times. I do like this website probably more so uh, than the rest, niche.com, because I find that it their grades tend to align with actual data a little bit more, and they, they give Coos Bay a C plus. So let's look at the data as reported by the local police department, and again, as tracked by the FBI. All right, so for Coos Bay, we're going to look at a little graph here for the last 10 years, 2012 to 2022. And as you can see, the past few years, it has gone up slightly. This is all violent crime. For 2022, there were 94 violent crime incidents and 103 offenses reported by the Coos Bay Police Department. There's about 15, 16,000 people uh, or so, roughly, in uh, Coos Bay looking at property crimes. There were, in 2022, there were 953 property crimes in Coos Bay. These numbers are going to be about as high as you will see uh, for the entire Oregon coast. The, the Coos Bay area and combined with North Bend is going to be the most populous area along the Oregon coast. Um, of course, there's, there's oftentimes going to be a correlation between population and crime. Coos Bay is also one of the most uh, affordable, in other words, uh, inexpensive areas along the Oregon coast. Poverty is also higher there and Crime and poverty uh, are, are very highly correlated. So that's going to be one of the bigger reasons for higher crime in the Coos Bay area. But uh, again, like I mentioned, uh, comparing to like to say L.A., if you're coming from somewhere in California, L.A. or San Francisco, is Coos Bay crime going to feel high to you? Uh, probably not. Again, 900 or uh, uh, 953 uh, property crimes, but how many violent crimes were there? 94 violent crimes out of uh, 15, 16,000 people for, for 2022. Now, North Bend, which uh, if you're not familiar with the area, sort of blend together. The downtowns are distinct and separate, but uh, overall the cities uh, really feel the same. And if you're not from the area, you might not know the difference uh, between North Bend and, and Coos Bay. Overall C is the rating from niche.com. Uh, but what do the stats look like? So all violent crime looks like uh, slightly down from 2018. For the North Bend area, there were 13 violent crimes. There's about 10,000 people uh, that live in the North Bend area. So about 25, 26,000 people combined between the two areas. So when we're looking at both areas combined, uh, North Bend, Coos Bay, relative to larger cities, it's probably going to feel pretty low for you. Uh, how about property crime? For 2022, there was 437 property crimes in the North Bend area. All right, one other area that's just uh, north of that, I don't, I don't want to overlook. Sometimes people ask about this area, but uh, not probably the one of the more well-known areas along the Oregon coast, which is Reedsport. They got a B minus. Uh, let's look at the data. So again, this is a small area. Uh, Reedsport, all violent crime in 2022, just six violent crimes. Property crime, 111. And uh, looks like it's slightly been kind of tapering off over the past uh, couple years or so. All right, just south of uh, the Coos Bay area, Bandon. So this is also going to be a very small area. They are rated as a B plus. The data... Uh, according to the FBI, all property crime for Bandon, there was 57 property crimes in 2022. All violent crimes, there was one violent crime for Bandon in 2022. And again, just kind of uh, looking at the graph here, looks like you had a little bit of an uptick uh, around 2019, 2020. And then for all property crimes, uh, 2020, a little bit of a downtick, 2020 to 21, a little bit of an uptick, but uh, the number is just so nominal uh, between, you know, 35, 48, 57, that uh, you're probably, it's probably not noticeable for people that are actually living there. So like I mentioned, uh, doing some Google searches for these things, if you do a, a Google search, for example, for Bandon, so Bandon, again, 
uh, just one violent crime, 57 property crime, 57 crimes uh, reported in 2022. So the people that live there and uh, the people that are familiar with the area are probably going to tell you that crime is very, very low. Some might tell you it almost feels non-existent. But if you just do a quick Google search, what's Google going to tell us? It's going to say that Bandit has overall crime rate of 12 uh, crimes per 1,000 residents, making the crime rate here near the average for all cities and towns across America. So according to just doing a Google search, which uh, gives us uh, an answer from neighborhoodscout.com, crime is about average in Bandon. Remember that because we're going to we're going to contrast that with another town uh, here in just a moment. Just south of Bandon, you'll get Port Orford. They don't have enough data uh, for them to actually give a rating at niche.com. According to the FBI, all violent crimes, no violent crimes reported. How about all property crimes for Port Orford? Looks like we're just going back to 2018 and uh, just three reported uh uh, in 2018, you can see if we go back to 2012, it's just been slight going down every year. But uh, the, the data is just so minimal that there's not even anything to look at there. So going to be very similar in Port Orford as it is Bandon. And then Gold Beach, just to the south of Port Orford, also not quite enough for a rating. Let's look at the data. This also is just going to go to 2018, zero violent crimes in 2022, all property crime I think that's just because we don't have any data. So 2018 is going to be the most recent for violent crimes. Property crime, real quick, we'll take a look at that number, 49. Uh, Gold Beach, small town, there's maybe 3,3500 people, something like that uh, in that town. And then just south of that is probably better known Brookings. So if we're looking at Brookings, they have a B minus according to niche.com. For 2022, there were 19 violent crimes. There's about 6,000 people that live uh, in Brookings. How about property crime? 121 property crimes in 2022. Not really trending too much up or down, but uh, I mentioned uh, a Google search just a moment ago uh, in relation to Bandon. So if I ask Google, what does Brookings, Oregon crime look like? It says the crime rate in Brookings is considerably higher than the national average across all communities in America from the largest to the smallest, although at 13 crimes per thousand residents, it is not among the communities with the very highest crime rate. So they're saying it's not the highest, but it is above average at 13 crimes per thousand people. Compare that again to Bandon. It said that uh, 12 crimes per thousand people was average. So again, if you're just asking Google and the answer that you're going to get from neighborhoodscout.com is that the crime rate is considerably higher than the national average in Brookings. But if we actually look at the data, if we look at the actual numbers, 19 violent crimes out of about 6,000 people or so. I don't know anybody in Brookings or that knows Brookings. Uh, that would probably say or guess that crime is higher uh, than the national average. <clears throat> so that's really that's why it's important uh, to just just to actually look at the data because if you're just Google searching these things, the answers you're going to get are, are going to vary uh, dramatically and probably not give you uh, the real good sense as to actually how things are uh, on the ground. So uh, cr like I mentioned, crime is uh, very relevant and subjective. If you're coming from a major city, uh, a place like Coos Bay is probably going to feel like there's less crime. If you're coming from a really small town that isn't used to any crime, might feel like there's a little bit more crime. Uh, overall, though, the Oregon coast uh, crime is very, very, very low. To a lot of people, it feels non-existent. In our previous video, I think this is probably the area uh, that had the highest numbers. Again, but uh, knowing people that live there and people that travel there, uh, you just don't hear the complaints about the crime. The complaints you hear about uh, for crime the most along the Oregon coast are people that have lived there their whole lives, people that have lived there for decades, people that are used to virtually no crime, and they see a little bit of uptick in crime, and it feels like crime is higher. So I hope that gives you uh, a much better sense as to what crime is like for the southern Oregon coast. Again, my sense is that it's pretty low. The data shows that it's pretty low. It's probably going to feel pretty low, but again, it depends on the area that you're coming from. If you're thinking about moving to the Oregon coast, if you have questions, again, my name is Seth Marchant. I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I've helped a lot of people 
people relocate and retire along the Oregon coast from Astoria to Brookings. If you're one of those people that has questions, if you're thinking about taking the next steps, you can call, text, email. You can find all of our contact information below in the description. Or if you're watching from TV, you can hit that QR code. It'll take you straight to our website where you can find all of our contact information. And if you want to see more videos about what it's like to live along the Oregon coast, we have over 100 videos. Most of them are videos showing you about the area, showing you the neighborhoods, drone footage, driving footage, talking about the pros and cons of the area. So you're really going to get a sense for what it's like to live along the Oregon coast on our channel. So make sure and subscribe if you want to see more videos like that. Give me a thumbs up if this video helped you. Uh, feel free to comment. We'll uh, respond back. And until next time, take care, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.